First off, let me thank those of you who reached out to me over the last month or so and have asked, hey, are you okay? Is everything all right? Because we have not seen any of your posts. Yes, I'm fine. One of the reasons I took some time off is, quite honestly, I needed it. I was tired. This is a ongoing battle and after a while it does wear you out. The insanity and the stupidity of the world, if you're paying attention, is wearing. Uh, not to mention the day-to-day -day rigors of life, which everything comes along with. And collectively, all of it piled up and I thought, you know what? I think I need a little break. And the good news is that no matter when I come back, the insanity will still be here. Lo and behold, it's still here. Anyway, let's get right into it. One of the things we hear a lot about in Canada recently is our housing crisis. We have the liberal idiots um, coming up with all kinds of policies to address the housing crisis. They're going to throw record amounts of money, new policies, they're going to implement new rules, all of these wonderful things to solve a crisis that they created. Yes, my friends, the government that is professing to fix your problems is also the source of your problems. What do I mean? Well, let's look at what's fundamentally changed in Canada in the last few years. What is one of the number one things that could possibly be impacting the housing supply? And if you apply simple rules of economics, the law of supply and demand, when there's a lot of demand, not enough supply, the prices go through the roof, whether it be renting or purchasing or whatever it may be. So has the demand gone up in Canada? Yeah. So what is the demand due to? Hmm, I wonder how. Are Canadians just kind of, you know, procreating like bunnies and having lots of kids and we've got this population explosion? I don't think so. Because Canada as a whole is getting a basically a flat birth rate, which it cannot sustain. So what is causing all of this record demand? Immigration. That's right. We are welcoming record amounts of immigrants into this country over the last few years. Now, I'm not against immigration. As you can see by my skin tone, I'm a brown man. I came to this country as an immigrant. I have no issue with letting immigrants in, qualified immigrants, immigrants that are going to enhance this country fundamentally make it better. Now, that's not to say I don't want to let hu on a humanitarian basis people in as well. Sure, we should have a percentage of that. But right now, our goal should be to make sure that average everyday Canadians, people who've been citizens here forever, have a chance at all the basic things that they've been promised in exchange for all the taxes and all of the dues they pay to this country. Now, what I'm saying is that for the time being, if we really want to solve the housing crisis, maybe we should turn off the immigration tap. Not forever, maybe two, three, four years, and we can gradually ramp it back up again. That would give our housing stock a chance to catch up, and then the supply and the demand, maybe we can equalize a little better. Not to mention the other services all the immigrants are in need of as well. What could they be? Have you noticed in the last few years that when you drive by a walk-in clinic, there's a huge lineup of people left to right, almost as if they were crossing the desert? Well, that's because, wonder why? Could there be just an increased demand for doctors, nurses, services? And again, we have a, uh, a supply issue not being able to keep up with that demand, which immigration has led to. Now, some of these immigrants are younger, which is great. They're going to have a lot of working years, a lot of taxes they'll eventually pay into this country. But some of them are older and they're bringing their older parents in. Not that I have anything against families not being united. I don't want to see them divided. But if I have older immigrants who've not paid into this system in this country towards all the medical and all the services that this country is affording them, then there's a deficit there. I'm covering that extra shortfall. And if they're basically retiring as soon as they get here or a few years later, they're collecting some austerity programs that we have to pay for. Now, I'm not saying that everything should be cold cut where it's just dollars and cents, but right now in the situation we're in, we're not certainly a well-off country under, under the G7. Our GDP, if we look at what we're spending on uh, costs for housing, mortgages, everything else, we're in record numbers. We are not a country that is doing better. In fact, we're a country that's sliding the wrong way. We're doing worse. We are fundamentally uh, adrift and afloat and going into basically crashing into the rocks. And unless we take hold and stock of that, nothing's going to change. So how do we do that? Well, we have to educate those people who don't watch these videos that believe all of this progressive liberal nonsense 
that the government can fix all their problems. And what they have to come to realize is government is actually the source of all their problems. If you look at how much government has grown in the last few years under Trudeau, it's close to 40%. He has grown the federal government by close to 40%. That's a record amount, folks. Given the fact that our unemployment rate is still around 6%, adding new immigrants isn't going to necessarily solve that problem. The only areas that we're seeing a lot of growth in for employment these days is the governments at all levels. That is not sustainable because you and I have to pay for that. These people, while it's fair enough, they've got a job and some would argue, well, yeah, but this bureaucrat we've hired on is now paying taxes. That's right. They are paying taxes. However, a hundred percent of their salary comes from me. And even if they're paying 20, 30 percent of their money out in taxes, hmm, I don't know. Yes, they're spending money in the economy. And yes, that helps the economy grow. But am I not subsidizing that? And quite honestly, uh, call me crazy, but I think we could probably lose a third to half of the government employees out there and things would still get effectively done because I've never known government to do a good job. Now, I may be wrong, and if I am, please correct me and tell me which departments are run really well, which part of government is a hallmark and a beacon of excellence. I would love to know that fact. So what do we do? I would tell you, Mr. Trudeau, uh, Mr. Singh, all of you ones of all of you people out there, which I know you'll never watch this video, nor will any of your sycophants. But if you really truly want to fix the problem, maybe, like I said, turn off the immigration taps for a little while, not forever, until we can get this thing under control. Because I promise you, Canadians are already broke and spending money we don't have to fix problems that you're creating isn't going to fix anything. Anyway, I do appreciate you watching. It's nice to be back. I look forward to posting more videos. Please share your comments. You can also follow me on my Rumble channel because sometimes YouTube has a hissy fit and you're not here anymore. Or you can follow me on my Twitter at Camera612. See you next time.